there are a lot of things going on here, Pastor. Bless you. You must be super busy. <laughs> right. Anyway, I want to thank you all those who are serving in in various uh, sphere here this morning. The worship, those who are manning the PA, and those who are preparing this, uh, uh, <coughs> the communion. And Pastor, thank you for sharing a very good passage in Hebrew chapter 2. Very good. Uh, and I'm particularly happy because uh, there are a lot of emphasis uh, uh, put on word, the word of God. Don't worry about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is read the word of God. Huh? When you study the word of God diligently, the Holy Spirit is exalted. In fact, he will help you uh, to read a better insight, uh, you know, about God, about Christ, and what is to come. Anyway, uh, today my message is simple, right? But nevertheless, it takes some effort uh, from all of you. You have to pay a bit of attention. Because I, uh, this passage I'm going to share with you require your full attention. Uh, right? Okay? Because the Word of God is not just uh, pass and pass and pass by. It's supposed to stay in your heart and in your spirit. Okay? So, now, I want to say a prayer before I start, okay? A simple one. Father, we give you thanks. Today, we need your word because your word is life-giving word. It saves us. It gives us, it reveals to us various truths in regard to God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and also in regard to humanity. So, Father, we need that. We do not just want to go about our Christian life, win and fancy, and uh, a little bit here, a little bit there. But we need your word, which is meant, a calculator to give us life, or the ever more long. So we need your help. God, Holy Spirit, we need your help. I can only speak to the hearing of the people, but only the Holy Spirit can take it to the depth of their heart. We glorify you. So, Lord, exhort your own word in Christ's name. Amen. Now, there are 66 books in the Bible. But not many people like every book in the Bible, right? Because I must admit also, admittedly, some of the books are difficult to read or even uh, uh, difficult to understand. I could give one example, like the book of Revelation. Seldom I see church cover the whole book. Yeah. But then the book begins with verse 3, chapter 1, blessed are those who read and do it, isn't it? And at the end it says again, blessed are those who do it and read it. You know. Cursed are those who remove any part. Because the book of Revelation contains a lot of imagery, a lot of language that I will use that we don't understand. Because it was written 2,000 years ago by John. Okay? So you, you must understand. But nevertheless, you cannot avoid studying that book because the book of Revelation gives us a glimpse of what is to come. When you know what is to come, you'll be more careful with your life, right? When you know what is to expect, when you know emphatically Christ is a will return for his people, then you are on your feet. You do not treat your Christian life as if it's just another religious you know, uh, journey. Am I right or not? Uh? Another one is, for example, the book of Numbers in the Old Testament. It is a boring book. I also don't like that book, to be very honest, because there are a lot of numbers in that book. Uh -huh. But I believe that book was included in the scripture, one of the 66 books, is because God wants to tell us He is also God of details. You understand? God does not just care for the macro. He also micro is a God. Uh. To me, you see, when, when you study, when you read the book of uh, Numbers, you see a lot of numbers. You know why? He's very specific. Uh, 
without the book of Numbers, then we do not know God is really that specific. And we will always think that God just care for the, 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 the major event, uh, the macro happening, but He won't care about you in detail. That is not true. Of course, in the book of Isaiah, it's a very strong worded book. That strong worded book actually, God revealed Himself to you how holy He is. Everything happened under the sun is under His control. Even sometimes, enemy tramp over us and God said, I'm the one who gave him power, right? I'm sure you know. But don't worry, the Assyrian, once they, once they bully you and, and, and you know, you know uh, conquer you, one day I will, <laughs> one day I will, one day I will do something with you. That is the God that we worship. We don't worship a God who is just so minor and so sub sub so you know, who is just, just, just don't care about a lot of things. He's busy with a lot of things. That's not true. <coughs> we are living in a very hostile world, you must understand. Because today, the trend of this world is to go for fast, fast food, right? Everything must be fast. You know, whenever you buy uh, 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 an equipment or instrument or new phone, you actually don't read the manual. Uh. You actually don't read the manual. Tell me how to use it. Uh. Tell me how to do for Facebook. Tell me how to WhatsApp and then Instagram. Uh. You don't care about the manual. But when it comes to Christ, when it comes to Scripture, when it comes to God, we cannot afford to do that. You must have a you must have an understanding of the implication of it. Implication means what does it imply? Who says it? Why God says that? Why Christ says that? Why Paul says that? It is not just to, you know, oh, say it, then never mind, now you want to hear or not. You cannot, you cannot grow like that. You cannot grow. So whenever a problem arises, whenever there are calamity, you fall apart. Is that right? So you need to affirm the word of God in such a way that it is the word of God is the representation of who God is. What else God can do? Christ is not here. That's why he gifted he keep us with this Bible, isn't it? So each and every book has its distinct, distinct uh, implication. But all overall is God's own breath of word. Okay, now today I entitled message just above all. You know, I hope all of us come to a point where the Bible says, even quoted in Hebrews, right? Chapter 11, chapter 12, those, people, those earlier called by God, they don't mind even die for the cross. No, no, don't worry, God won't want you to die today. He probably has some uses for you. But the thing is, the concept, the implication is this. When we have come to the Lord, above all, is Christ. But everything, if He's not everything, He's nothing. He's not, if He's not everything, He is nothing. And we will probably will make Him something. That is why a lot of people go to church years after years, and then you see their, their perspective of in life is still the same. Now today I want to share with you one chapter of Ecclesiastes. You probably cannot pronounce it. <laughs> uh, it's the Old Testament believed to have written by Solomon. Okay, a man who has had everything. But let's hear him with the anointing by the Holy Spirit. What God wants us to hear from him. He has got everything. But let's he hear him, his writing, with the help of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, the book of Ecclesiastes is one book also we don't like. Because we view it as one book that is very depressing. We talk about meaningless, la, futile, la, you know, you know uh, fear God, la, you know, you know, 
talking about all the things that we human by our own original nature, we don't like. We come to church, we like something that is uplifting. Right? Oh, that is not wrong. You should hear something that is uplifting. But to me, it, 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 it comes this way. I have to be told that I'm dead. I am hopeless. And God gave me hope. And Christ is the, he is the one who grants hope and give us assurance of the hope to come, isn't it? So therefore, you and me must hear something that is a little bit depressing before you can live up, isn't it? Now, Dr. Guan is a doctor. I mean, when you have got some problem, you know, some serious problem, you go and see Dr. Guan. Dr. Guan, will he be a good doctor if he tells you nothing, don't worry. Uh, no medication, never. He knows very well that the condition could be very serious. Even to a point, it could be cancer. But yeah, yeah, never mind, yeah, never mind. Because why you want to hear, ma? And then you go and then you, you leave the clinic and you go tell, but the one very good one, ah. Uh. Of course, it's very good, lah, uh, because it's not telling you the truth, uh. I would think this way. You want him to tell you the truth. Am I right or not? Gently, lah, uh, gently. He must tell you the truth as a professional medical personnel. If not, he should be disqualified. Am I right or not? That's why I have accompanied a lot of people to hospitals, psychology, psychiatrists, and all that. I say, just tell us the truth. But do it slowly, huh? Don't just kill us with your word, but yeah. Cancer, how many percent? Two percent, three percent. You and me need something. We need to understand the word of God through its implication. Then we can apply it. Understand or not? I'm not talking about just understanding and then not do anything. I'm talking about implication. What does it imply? Why God say that to that, that writer or that author? And now, how do we apply it? The book of Ecclesiastes is pure, it's very displeasing, very untrendy. Oh, very untrendy. Eh? Come on, uh, we, are, we, are, we are living a time of a uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, smartphone, uh, you know, all these uh, all these social media. Now you talk about Ecclesiastes. And it's some would view it as the doomsday literature. Oh. Oh, like that one, uh, become Christian like that. Uh, everything is meaningless. Uh, everything is futile. Fear God. Uh. But you have overlooked one thing. Actually, the book of Ecclesiastes they say, you must enjoy everything under the sun. Uh, the Ecclesiastes writer, or Solomon say, you must enjoy everything under the sun. Don't lie to yourself as if that you're waiting for to go to heaven and now you stop living. You should live. Do whatever you can, Dr. Kwan. Uh, you know, like for example, like this morning, this service, everybody, I mean, I see a lot of you serving in different sphere. The moment I walk in, I see somebody, our sister preparing uh, the, the tabla, and the worship team was very good, and Tony, I'm going to am I? And, and pastor, you know, the, the Lord's table itself is already a message huh? without having to add man's word, isn't it? Chapter 2 is already Hebrew, a fantastic book. Okay, anyway, on the contrary, the book of Ecclesiastes is not a dull book. It is not a, a, a depressing book. It's not an untrendy book. But it's a book. It's not a doomsday book. It's a book that exposes humans' depravity. Come on, how do we come to the Lord? Lord, I'm dead. I'm hopeless. I'm a, I'm a, no, no matter how you look at me, how you turn me, I'm still a sinner. And by grace, you have called me. Right? John said in chapter 6, Father will call those you know, to come to the sun. Unless he calls, you cannot come. That is a privilege. You come to the Lord and say, Lord, just by grace, save me. 
So we need to be exposed of our human depravity. Depravity means our hopelessness, our sinfulness, the depth of our sinfulness. Don't ever think that you are a very nice person as you, when you compare with someone in the, in the prison, uh, those who are on drugs, uh, those who are rapists. Of course, in that sense, morally, you are better. But let's be honest with ourselves. Our depravity, our sinfulness, is not just what you do. It is who you are. Being born into human form. God has allowed that. Why God has allowed that? Let me tell you. You blow your mind so that He get all the glory. No, truly, man. I, I have come to 100% su- you know, surrender to that, that, that teaching. That God allowed people to sin, all right? He allowed people to, to, to do things as He will, and the chances is a lot of things, a lot of it will be sinful things, selfish things. Greedy thing, you know, last two thing. But God say, I still can save the person. I still can forgive him. That's why Christ came and died on the cross. But before you grasp this idea, you must know how to pray you and I are in our true unregenerated nature. But as we have come to the Lord, we be given a new spirit. A regenerated person now. You know, we see things that different now. But nevertheless, it's a journey. You have to keep going. Keep going, what? Not just keep coming to church. You must say, Pastor, uh, Pastor Kwan, I, I would like to study the, the, the Bible. Uh, right, make sure, make, make sure I, I'll be taught. You need to be taught. You need to be taught. Okay? You cannot just say, I hear God voice and God voice. Everybody hear God voice. Isn't that right? Taylor Swift also got wise now. No, 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 no. In the book of Judah, in the book of Judah, you see, you know what you say? Once and for all given to all saints. The word of God has once and for all been given to all saints. Of course, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, disregarding some of the exceptional, exceptional situation, okay? Right? But generally speaking, we all have the word to fall back on. And this is where the Holy Spirit will be exalted. The Holy Spirit will be happy to energize you and to illuminate for your sake. Okay? So the book of Ecclesiastes is about human depravity, also human hope, and human duty and goal. You know, I'm also almost 70. Sometimes I think, oh, I almost finished. <laughs> yeah. But I was thinking, the goal, the goal of my, the duty and the goal is to fear God and to sow whatever seed I can. I don't come here thinking of how to make you happy, just happy without a reason. I'm here to make you glad Jubilant, I want, I'm here to make you hopeful and happy. But it must start from something that is not so good. For <laughs> okay, so now here, because he, in the book of Ecclesiastes, there are some words that are very powerful here. Everything is meaningless, very depressing. Everything is uh, futile, everything is useless. All right, fear God, fear God, and the duty of man or to go uh, duty and go a man. But don't forget, we have overlooked one thing. The book of sex, uh, the book of Ecclesiastes say, enjoy everything under the sun. It's just that don't forget the days of darkness, that's all. Okay? So now I'm gonna cover chapter eleven, the whole of whole whole of it. <laughs> so there are ten there are ten, uh, uh, 10 verses. I, I have actually bisected two verses in a group two, you know, quickly. And after that, I'll just give you another two passages uh, uh, in regard to Jesus Christ, then I'm done, okay? I, I know you cannot sit too long already. Huh? Okay, <laughs> okay. The, uh, see, uh, the book may aw- many avoid finding it difficult to read, understand, and digest. 
thinking is depressive, untrendy, and a doomsday literature. Okay. On the contrary, just remember this. I, I, I want to show you what I've just said. It's a book about humans, depravity, humans' hope, and human duty and goal. Everything is meaningless, futile, but be joyful. Be joyful. Fear God and the duty of man. Okay, let's begin with the first two verses. All right? Now, please remember, I'm here to show you reading the Word of God, the first thing you must grasp is the implication. God says it to the writing of Solomon, the implication, what it means. Okay, and then you can apply it. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Chapter 1, uh, sorry, verse 1 to verse 10. All right, but I'm going to read two verses here. Ship your grain across the sea. Some translations use the word cast your bread. You don't cast your bread into the sea, lah. Come on. Let's let's say let's say Tony has got some seed. Tony, you got some seed, huh? Where it can, if you throw into the soil, it can grow. And I ask you to throw into the sea. It's absurd, isn't it? Right? And then ship your grain across the sea. After many days, you may receive a return. Invest in seven venture. Yes in eight. If you can if you can invest in eight, invest in eight, not just seven. You do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Now, it is actually a little bit ambiguous here. Okay, what, what does that mean? Some would think that it is about business, you know, right? Making life better, you venture. Basically, you know, whenever you read scripture, there are two there are two uh, there are, there are one secondary implication about how we apply the verses that we have just read. But overall, there's a spiritual element. The Word of God is just not, does it, do not just tell you how, how to make your, your business successful. It's more concerned about who you are as a person. All right? Now, you see, uh, ship you're going. Now, we are not to be idle around. We are not to sit around. We are supposed, while we're still alive, even though God has kept us safe until the day of eternity, but at the moment, do this life, do it! Spread the gospel! Spread the gospel! If you're working, do it well! You know, do our everything, just do not either. Do not just sit around and thinking, well, the, 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 uh, my Christian life is just a concept in, in the eternity. No, do it now. Go, go to church. Uh, ask the leadership, what, what, how, in what way I can contribute. There are many, many here, you know. You see the senior one, the senior? Uh, I, I think I, I, I'm qualified to join also. Uh. You see, uh, because why? Invest in seven. Now, if we apply it in a lower sense, all right, a secondary sense, I mean, do it. Help people. Spread the gospel by being a friend to them. Help them, those who are in need. All right? Even those that you think may not be very hopeful. I've been accused by a lot of people say, Pastor, why you help this person? Why you help that person? I say, do not change. I say, yeah, my job is just to sow the seed. And do whatever I can. Even Myanmar people, right? You know, I, I'm in some ministry with Myanmar people. So now, you see, we don't know. We don't know. But the word of God tells us just do it. You do not know. You know, there are many days you may receive a return. That's why Jesus in the gospel say, well, the farmer go out and sow the seed. And then he go back and sleep. And then when he come, when he wake up tomorrow, he sprout. He also don't know what happened. You don't know. The Holy Spirit work in ways is beyond your calculation, beyond your understanding. If you have spoken the word of God directly to the person, but at the same time, care for them. All right? Especially when it comes to gospel. That's why Sister Lilian so zealous. 
talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, you see, uh, the principle of cause and effect alone, or the law of nature alone, should direct us towards eternity thinking. You understand? You know, when, whenever you go, you, you know, sometimes I, I know there are... <coughs> I like to read about science and how they discover this. How, I know. But then, overall, I get all zero up. I say, there is God. And this God has revealed himself to me. So all the law of nature, the cause and effect, should direct us to the eternity perspective. Uh, where the wickedness and goodness of man will only be realized. Sometimes you see some very wicked people, you know, very notorious people, and they enjoy life. Oh, they have five, six wives, ten wives, 90 over years old, my dog in Australia, still married. 90 over years old, still married. Uh, I'm sure you know why. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, should not mention the name, but look at these people. Uh, look at Tesla boss here. You know? Marrying is like nothing. Well, the, the 12 charges that were born. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that their sin cannot be forgiven. Nah, I'm not saying. I'm just saying the wickedness without God regenerating and saving power, all right? So I mean, you may not see the judgment there. All the judgment and reward will only be realized in the place of eternity. Understand? Huh? Some people are so wicked. They see me, he's so happy, he's so, he's so successful. I say, let him be happy, let him be, happy uh, let him be successful. The Lord holds the key to judgment and as well as reward. Move from an overly analytical approach to life, to a journey of life of grace and trust. That means don't just study, study, oh, why like that, la? why like that, la? and then don't do anything. Say, don't be over analytical. No, I, I'm a person, I like to read science, uh, you know, on YouTube, uh, and you go into the sea, uh, and all different, different creation of God, uh, really, they're so mesmerizing, you know. Then I say, God, you're so fantastic. Even lately, uh, I've been paying a lot of attention to insect, octopus, you know, how they are formed. Oh, I say, God, you're so immaculate. You're so terribly smart, you know. How can you how can you how can you create so many things like that? All looking different, you know? And yet they survive. God, you're so amazing. So but then, you know, I don't just say, oh how you happen now, uh, then move from an overly analytical approach to life. And say uh, don't just study, but to a life to a journey of life of grace, trust and obedience. That is the application right clear now if you do not know the part of the wind or how the body is formed in mother's womb so you cannot understand the work of god the maker of all things sow your seed in the morning and at evening let your hand not be idle for you do not know which will succeed whether this or that or whether both will do equally well go and spread the gospel Go and sow the seed. Next morning you wake up, some may, you know, you may see some nice harvest. You don't know. No. It could come years later. I don't know. Your job is to sow the seed. Tell them what the Bible says. Tell them what God says and what Jesus has taught. Do not just start off by saying that God wants to make you a millionaire. God wants to heal you so that you will and you don't you won't even have a cold in your whole life. Now. Don't don't do that. Don't do that. Be brave. Tell them the depravity of human. Then bring in the gospel. That's the way to do. Okay? We do not know everything, but just don't either. Don't just do nothing. Human's knowledge pales as compared to the true to true and real wisdom from God. Human's knowledge is powerful. I, 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 I don't deny that. But it has its limitation. But as compared to the power, the wisdom of God, it is nothing. It is nothing. 
you know, people want to find out how the how how a child is formed in the mother's womb or that. Actually, doctor, medical science can explain that. But how it all started? How come? Why it happened that way? Yeah. Humility and submission to God. The book of Ecclesiastes, especially chapter 11, should bring you to your knee. And then you humble yourself before God. God, I know a lot of things, but still not, not enough to understand life. It's you that give us the understanding of life. So humility and submission to God. All right? And stop wishful wondering. Do not just, you know, you know do not just wish, keep on thinking wishfully. And then and get real. Get real with God. Get real with life. And get real with work. Am I right, Tana? The word work is not a bad thing. Adam was asked to work on the field, right? In the very beginning, before sin broke out. So work means on earth, we have to, we have to do, you know? We have to live out. So get real with God. And get real with life. And also get real with work. Light is sweet, right? And it pleases the eye <coughs> to see the sun. Now we all like light. We know light means we don't know where we are going and where we are. And however many years anyone may live, let them enjoy them, all right? You see, it's not just all the de depressing words. He say enjoy them all. You know, whether you are young, in here, when you say we are, you are young, means basically it means you are not dead. So all of us should enjoy everything under the sun. Because that is actually a decree by God. But never tell us that's a, that's a warning. But let them remember the days of darkness. Right? When you enjoy everything under the sun, you know, God actually is happy because he created for you. But never tell us, don't forget. Let them remember the days of darkness. For there will be many. Everything to come, it's meaningless. You cannot take anything away from this life. No matter how successful you are, how loved you are, after you are gone, one year, two years, you will be forgotten. So everything is meaningless as compared to the seeking of God or spending eternity with God. But that doesn't mean we don't enjoy and then remain a depressed person. Get out. Don't do something. Oh, it is a benevolent, benevolent gift for you to enjoy everything under the sun. In chapter 3, there is time for this, there is time for this, right? There is time to dance, there is time to mourn, there is time to cry, there is time to, to laugh, isn't it? Right? At least that's in chapter 3. Right, right? See, in this world, there's always two, two, two side ones. There's dark, there's black color, that's why there's white color. There's calamity, there is sadness. That's why we, we, we know how to be happy when the sadness is dealt with. There are sicknesses. That's why sometimes when sicknesses are treated properly, you recover, then you enjoy health. It doesn't work. If this way, if in life, everything is just one way, especially those who think that after having coming to Christ, attending church, Everything will be so good. Everything will be so good. It cannot be. Because without the bad, you don't even know what is good. Come on. If you have experienced being poor, now you have a bit of saving, you, you know how you feel to be. Right? You have a quarrel with someone. Uh, it's because of you know, both sides, sin and all that. Then after you have reconciled, you know, isn't it? That soothing, nice feeling after having reconciled with someone. So that is the law of contrary. That's the law of black and white. Without the black color, we don't even know what is white color. And God is demonstrating all things to us. So benevolent is 
the joy and enjoy everything under the sun is a gift from God. Benevolent, benevolent means His kindness. Second, it is a necessary reminder. Today we are covering this passage. It's a necessary reminder. You know, I, I we fear and tremble every time I take the appropriate. I say, God, don't, don't just let me say all these things I feel like saying. But let me say something that, that is important. It may, because I can only speak to their hearing, their ears, but only the Spirit of God, you know, when it's div- the word is divided correctly, will move the heart of people in due time. So it's a necessary reminder that everything is to come is meaningless as compared to what we can all, what we can gain in eternity. But that doesn't mean you don't enjoy life. You should enjoy everything under the sun. You don't look down all those things that God has created. You enjoy. But never tell us there's a warning. Darkness, the days of darkness will come. And one day, we all will say bye-bye to this world. And then everything is meaningless. If you save up millions and millions and millions, and you hoard everything you have without... You know, you know, you know, putting into community, help those people, whether they are deserving or not. Your money cannot go with you. Okay, now, not only is a it's a necessary reminder, it's also a dreadful warning. The word of God, when it's spoken for and interpreted correctly and properly divided, it should it should frighten you before it comfort you. Dr. Kwan will tell you, after examining you, why, uh, Dr. Kwan, don't shake your head. Lah. Say lah, say lah, yeah, say lah, say. Well, I have to let you know the result of the examination. You've got something serious there. Who wants to hear? Nobody wants to hear. I also don't like to hear. But then, so I'm going to tell you, but that's a way to bring about healing. Right? Your doom's feeling become hopeful. If every time you go and see Dr. Kwan, hey, you're okay. Oh. This year you're okay. Next year okay. Until you die, you're so okay. Oh. So that, that person probably won't see, won't see uh, the, 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 the significance of true joy because you're so used to it. Let's imagine, uh, like Tony, uh, every day also got $500 in the pocket. I, I like to pinch on him. So for him, go out and eat all the durian mao sang, uh, all, the, all, the, all the expensive dishes. Uh, every day he, he said, Tony, he will tell his wife, I also get fed up already. Because to him, it's a norm. There is no contrary. You understand? Uh? But let's say one person, another person, all of a sudden, not you, uh, uh, another person will suffer uh, uh, some, some breakdown in business, a little bit of financial issue, uh, and all of a sudden he becomes broke. Then he has to go and eat roti china, like me. It's serious, you know. Now inflation keeps going out. Uh, I, I want to be honest with you. Uh, I seek out places that are worthy to eat one. To be honest. It's not that I cannot afford that extra few dollars, okay? But I thought I also want to be wise. I don't mind go underneath a tree. You know, with lousy chair and table. I had one one time in there, seven fifty. The two fifty I put in the offering bag. I have a, you know, I, I don't mind go for a nice holiday, right? Don't, 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 don't get me wrong. I'm not against all these things. I'm just saying the centrality of our human life does not 
begin here and does not end here. It's after that. So it must come as a reminder and also a dreadful warning. Okay? Last, last two verses. You who are young, be happy. While you are young, and let your heart give you joy in the days of your youth. You see, God is not, the writer is not against being happy, being joyful. Right? Okay. For, follow the ways of your heart. Don't misread the, the meaning of this. Huh? Follow the ways of your heart. Basically, me, he is saying that you, you normally, you will do whatever you like to do, isn't it? Ah, here is another, the contrary, to make up the whole thing. But whatever you see, and know that all these things, God will bring you into judgment. Right? You go on website, pornography, you know, and all the stupid things and all that. Yeah, yeah, your heart follow, ma. your last rule, humanity, you know, nature. Ma. But then God say, okay, if those are the things that you enjoy, don't forget, judgment will be. So follow your heart in the sense that according to God's teaching, according to God's doctrine, according to God's truth. And those are the things you do and live, you sleep better. Okay? Now, then, so then banish anxiety. So, you know, don't, don't all the time get very anxious, all right? Banish anxiety from your heart and cast off the trouble of your body. When you get older, no matter how much powder you put in your face, one day you get older, come on. Uh, and no matter how much plastic surgery you do, you will get older one day. Don't lie, la, you, know, you know. It's just that you are so used to putting a lot of powder on your face, you know, you think, oh, not bad, oh. Take out all your, all your makeup and see? False eyelashes. False nose. But look decent, I think that you should. Okay? I'm not against some basic beauty thing. Okay? Now, banish anxiety from your heart and cast out, cast off the trouble of your body for youth and vigor are meaningless. Please, please, please. This is not to put you down. This is to put you down and lift you up to God. I told you, enjoy everything under the sun. If you have God perspective, your enjoyment in life is different. Okay? Now, the true pleasure is experience in faith in God. True pleasure is experience in faith in God. Obedience to God. You can experience two pleasure. Right? And satisfaction, you will be satisfied. Because God is satisfied as a gift from God. Futility. Futility means useless. Meaningless. Versus Fruitfulness. I, I'm glad that all of you show up in church, you know, in general, you are, you are serving here and all that. But I pray, I pray that all of you do not just live by emotion. You know, do not just because of someone who speaks from the pulpit and lift you up. Worship is good, but it must lead you to eternity perspective. The worship was quite good. Uh, our worship tonight is your wife is very good. Uh, but the thing is, it's not leading people to you, right? You're leading people beyond you, isn't it? God is holy. And yet, He is kind enough to send Christ to die in our place. His only begotten Son. Futility. You want your life to be futile or fruitful. Some people have come to Christ, baptized. After 10 years, you see, how are you? Uh? Same. Same. 
After that, eleven years, see okay, how how's your Christian? Are you growing? Are are you get excited about the word of God because that is his way of representing? Well, well, you look at your face. Well, well let's go and eat, lah. How can you grow? How can you say that? Oh, pastor, actually been in church for so long. You know that no, I I don't see the. I don't feel I have the power to have change. Of course, lah. Of course, lah. There's no meat. There's no veggie. You only drink porridge water. Come in, go out. Come in, go out. Come in, go out. Why? Why don't go and do Bible study? You think that is easy, ah? A lot of people wait for him in the clinic, you know. I want to go and see him. I'm so lazy. I'm so lazy. I see people are waiting for Taylor Swift. Ooh, okay, now I I I I must zoom forward to the pinnacle, to the culmination of the gospel. You understand? If you have done some study, some preaching in the Old Testament, you must bring it to Jesus Christ, the exact representation of who God is. Jesus is the culmination. He himself said, "I'm the fulfillment of all what scripture." If you don't know any other bo- uh, 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 Bible or, or books in the Old Testament, know me. That's where you start. Is it? I study a lot the Old Testament right from the Genesis. You know why? I want to know how things unfold. When I know how things unfold, then I could see ah. All the scripture have been fulfilled, except those who are in the future, isn't it? So I become amazed, and then I'm drawn to God again. You are excellent, God. How could you figure out everything? Okay, now Jesus say, you see, uh, Jesus spent the last evening right before he was arrested by the Roman soldier and all the Pharisees and put on the cross. He spent an Time of endearment, an evening of endearment with his disciple. No more public ministry. You want to say that, right? If this is a time from 13 all the way to 17, five chapters. That's why I love John, the book of John, because it becomes a sense the intimacy. Right from chapter 13 all the way to 17. Anyway, in between, in chapter 14, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth. Because earlier he said, I will go and prepare some mansion for you. I will go and prepare some places for you. And when I say I go and prepare some places for you, that means I will come and take you there. Right? And then Thomas again. We don't know the way how to go. And Jesus emphatically answered, Jesus answered, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. No one come to the Father except through me. You, if you really know me, you will know my Father as well. You want to know God? You must know Jesus. Right? From now on, you do know him. And Jesus, in fact, he said, you have seen him. How powerful that is. Authoritative, Jesus said. You have seen me, you have seen God. I'm the exact replica. I'm the exact, I'm the son. No religion teach this way. Because no religion has the anointing, has the truth of God. They say, making this statement. I'm the truth, the life. I'm the two, the way, the way, the two in the life. Buddha once said, you know, the founding father of the, you know, of the religion, all right? Five, five thousand years ago, he said, he tell the his disciple, he was underneath the tree, I'm telling you, he was telling you, the most important things in life is to know the way and the truth. 
and life. He says something very similar to that. I have a proof. I have a book to prove that. He says the way, the truth, the life. Because he found life very meaningless. He was lost. But after that, you know what he told his disciple? With me, we go and find. Let me. I'm going to find. Come join me. We go and find this secret. He also know. Buddha also know the way to turn the life. But he said, "Come, together we go and find it." But Jesus say what? I am the way to turn. The way is not a place. It's me. The truth is not somewhere hidden. The Lord of the Ring and all that is kind of me. The truth is in me. Is in me. And then life. You want life? Life here and after. And then he he was bold enough to go on and say, "If you have seen the Father, if you want to see the Father, it's in me." And I tell you, right to his disciple eleven. Judas will be going out there. So he said, see me. And then you will see me. Last one. Last one, all right? No, sorry. The way is to follow me. The way is to follow me. What is the way? That's why every time I go and counsel people, we all sort of problem, uh, health issue, uh, money issue, uh, business issue, uh, family issue. I always, the Holy Spirit always direct me back to the same thing in Scripture. Either it's truth or doctrine or counsel. It can come in different forms. You know, all the people want to see me is because they want a quick fix. What, what, what? How to make them millionaire? How to make them? How to make them successful like you are? How to shut everybody? Those who, who, who those whom he doesn't like. How he wants everybody suddenly become like him so much? Silly, isn't it? I say let's let's face some reality of life, okay? If everybody like you, I'm scared. You're supposed to be disliked by some people. Am I right or not? If you are a truthful person, those who keep on telling lies, they will not like you, isn't it? So how can you say I want everybody to like me? What's he do also like you, lah? Right? No, this is the reality of life. You're supposed to be caught in between. People liking you and people dislike you, but make sure the reason they like or do not like you for the right reason. So the way is to follow me, right? And to know the truth is to believe in me. To have a hopeful life is to live in me. Listen, ah, today the sharing is not just about some spiritual level. I also talk to you about real life, isn't it? Ah, uh, that's why. While waiting for the spiritual significance, live your life. You know, after service, when you go, you don't just. I think I'm floating, or I think I'm floating, or I'm on cloud. You still have to walk, lah, brother. After what you go for lunch or what, you still have to pay, lah. You don't tell your friend. Hey, just now the message for Sam John. Oh, you talk about spiritual thing. I think no need to pay, lah. You go back home, ah, and then your family, oh, they, 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 they you assure them today, ah, when I reach home, they must have, then, then, then maybe they will run to me and greet me and give me a hug. No, you go back, all of them playing TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Everything is still the same, right? It's your perspective that is different. Okay, so to be to have a hopeful, uh, to have a hopeful life is to live in it. Last one. I boldly say this: While you enjoy life here, Christ must be everything. He must be the above all. Because if it's not everything, you minus him from the from the equation, then he become nothing. You understand? He become nothing. If you minus something or take something away from him, then it it become anything. That's why a lot of Christian community preach a plastic Jesus. Treat, uh, you know, preach 
a message that is not in the representation of Christ. No, I'm very dreadful when people just run to some new believer or some people who are not Christian. God wants to make everything good for you. Yes, He wants to make everything good for you, for His sake. But before that, He must bring you down, isn't it? Okay, the last one. Huh? Jesus, before He ascended, he, he was in glorified form. He resurrected, but He was, He has not been taken to heaven yet. He has not ascended yet. He say this in Matthew 28, 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth. You know, on in heaven it sounds like spiritual thing, but on earth it's like practical thing. Actually, both are together. Right? Has been given to me. All authority. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Go. Go and sow. Make disciples of all nations. Not just preach to all nations, but make disciples. That is the hard part of the one. You know, people come to the church, the altar call, okay, then we say a sinner prayer, and then they think they are done. That's why their, their, their life is fruitless, futile. After 10 years, it's still the same. It's the discipleship. Discipleship takes something stronger. It is, you must train the person to love the word of God, to love Christ. And the person must come and, and subject himself to your, your authority. God given you authority, not you have authority. You know, I have someone before I first started a church, someone who is very good in interpreting, preaching and all that. Uh, this young man is a uh, graduate. He said, Pastor, I want to I want to be mentored by you. But as the years that I know him, I detected there's some pride in him. Right? I say, You sure? He said, Yes. Anyway, reluctantly I said, let's try it out. I said, After three months I said no. Let's be friends with you. Because when I commit myself to mentoring you, uh, I put aside once every Saturday with you, spend time with you. But I want to see a change in you, in your thinking and also in your action. But then after three months, you still talk about the same thing, and same thing, and same thing. The discipleship is not going anything. You understand? Every time we meet up in my office, you know, I say, open your Bible. Then it, it, it doesn't seem interested. He just want me to tell you how to fix his problem. He got some problem with the brother and all that. I say, if you don't forgive, uh, you never feel forgiveness. Uh. Yeah, you may be quite a well-known guy, but then who I know? I literally turned down. Okay, now, here. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, baptizing them is, is not just a magical moment is to let them be bold in the presence of God, in professing God. I tell you all, I had people who, the whole family came to the Lord, we baptized them, except the father. Because the father come from a gangster background. To him, to be baptized, huh, going to the water, looks stupid. <laughs> and look like no power. So after two, three years later, only he said, Pastor, I want to be baptized. So I put him in the water, and then he goes, yeah, I should have done that earlier. Two of them say this, you know, I'm not joking. So just wait. You know, right, right. Okay, anyway, but so, so the, the baptism is actually a public profession. It's to tell us, I'm proud of my God. I, I'm safe. I, 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 I humble myself before him, you know. This is also evangelistic. Some family come to the Lord because of that. You, know. you don't know how the Holy Spirit moves on, right? Okay? 20. And teaching them, ah, not just baptize, not just what, ah, teaching them to obey everything. Ah, to obey everything, not something or part of the thing I have commanded you. And surely, it guarantees I'm with you always. To the very end of the age, we mean I will be with you now, 
and unto eternity. Amen. Shall we all stand up? Come. Now, week after week, a lot of pastor, teacher have uh, preached message here, all right? Now, I just want you all to grasp the whole of this. Christian life is the same like everybody's life, except we have a new hope, right? We have a new spirit, and we have a new perspective. Jesus said, when it rained, everybody get wet. When the sun rises, believers and non-believers, everybody get the heat. Am I right or not? So don't, don't compartment Christian life. We are supposed to be in this world, but not of the world. Catch what I say, yeah? we are in this world. But we are not of the world. You understand? You're supposed to live slowly, but very surely, building up your spiritual discernment, your spiritual, spiritual perspective. Yes, you live. You still have to work. You still have to face all the, all the issues in life. But then, on top of that, you have something above all. Father, I give you thanks. Thank you for thank you for your word. Your word is not just like it's not other, like any other word. Hebrew says your word is like double edged sword. It cut into our bone and marrow, pulling out everything. Your word does not do that because and you will just leave us there. Your word is to expose us, our human depravity. And thereafter, upon one confession, hope will come through confessing in Jesus Christ, who alone can save. Father, we give you thanks. Help us once in a while go on our go on our knee. We do not have to beg for your forgiveness. We just have to trust Christ. Because when we know Christ, we know God. And all that He has commanded us. Whether in the form of truth, counsel, or principle. So help us, Lord, the reverence of God. Help us to live life that we ought to live, but we are above our perspective. So Lord, we give you thanks. May the people receive your word with gratitude and with determination and with a desire. And their faith is further affirmed. In Jesus' name, amen.